Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Thirsty for Art. This is Yu Chang, and in this episode, we're going to talk about this mistake. This one mistake that makes many art therapists broke. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this episode. So there is this one thing that I think really keeps a lot of art therapists broke. And to go straight into the point, I think that is. Actually, undervaluing your art therapy service. So, undervaluing your art therapy service. What does that mean? It means we play down our therapy. It means we minimize it, we underappreciate it, and we underestimate it. And also, we underestimate the financial value of art therapy as well, right? So, this might feel like oh, a little surprising or a little like. It could take you aback,、um, but I do think that you know, for us, we think that other people are undervaluing our therapy, but you know, but subconsciously and very in in very subtle ways, we can be the ones undervaluing in serious big time too. So I'm gonna explain to you the ways that we actually undervalue our therapy, and it's going to give us an idea of how we can really make our therapy more valuable, how we can really embrace its value, and that will make us more confident art therapists in general, right? So here is probably maybe the most common ways that we、um, undervalue our therapy, things that undervalue our therapy and make us broke. Number one, I think, is we underprice ourselves, right? As I mentioned, the financial undervaluing, right? We make our services low priced, like very underpriced. Ah,、uh, and why does underpricing lead to undervaluing our therapy service? Let's first explore what does it mean when we price something high versus low, because that it's all about that. Ah,、uh, a lot of us have this idea that if it's If there is a cheap price versus there is a high price for something very similar, what would you say? What would you think has more value, the cheap priced one or the high priced one? Of course, a lot of us would say the high priced one would have more value, right? We just assume the high priced one must have a lot of value, if, right? And often the times it is the case, right? Ah,、uh, it um because it just high priced ones involve more commitment, and high priced ones really attract people who think that it's more important that that the thing that they buy is more important to that person, so they put more money down for it, right? Um, and then on the other hand, cheap price we generally assume that it's not much value. It's everywhere, probably right. It's easy and quick, of course. You know there are many different factors that go into pricing, but just to keep it very simple and to make the point here, you know, just in general, right? Like cheap versus high price, we assume that there's more value in something that's high price. So what I'm saying here is like cheap price often communicates a low value to people, and so that's how it can lead to undervaluing of our service when we do underprice our services, right? And there are many reasons why we underprice our therapy services, right? But I think the most common reason is because we think people will not pay for a quote unquote regular priced or high priced art therapy service. So we we're pricing it based on this fear that people will not pay for something high priced or regular priced. This is detrimental because it is assuming that art therapy is not going to be valuable enough. For people to put down good money for it, right? And so you're assuming you're assuming people will not value it, and perhaps you know also this fear that people will sign up for a session and they might be disappointed, they won't get much out of it, and so you don't want to make people feel that way that they didn't get the value out of it. But if we have that kind of belief, then it's of course we're gonna have a hard time、uh, pricing our our therapy services adequately. And we'll choose the more comfortable path of underpricing it, because it seems like underpricing it would prevent these things from happening, right? Prevent people from feeling disappointed if they don't find value from it. Prevent people from not booking it、uh, because they think they don't see the value of it, right? So, what does this all mean? You know, this 
all means to us. It communicates to us. That's the most important thing. It, what it does to us is that it shows us that we're we're pricing it based on the disappointment that people might have when they do participate in a session. We're pricing it based on this belief, disbelief in our therapy. It communicates that we don't believe in our therapy. We don't believe that our therapy is valuable enough. And so we got to charge based on what's the potential value our therapy can have for someone. The highest value it can have for someone, right? That's how we can show that our therapy is valuable. So let's say you have like a iPad, right? And you're selling an iPad and you and someone who buys it don't get much value out of it. But you know, as the iPad seller, that iPad is so valuable. It can do many, many different things. It can make a big difference in someone's life and work, right? And so you price based on the potential value it has, not based on how useless, the potential of uselessness, right? The potential of disappointment someone might have. Hope that makes sense, right? You're not pricing something based on like, someone who might not see its value you are pricing it based on someone who does see its value you know its potential right so underpricing oftentimes signifies and establishes that our our art therapy service is not worth much right because you know it's it was very intertwined with low price right low price is intertwined with low value and it also signifies that maybe it doesn't have take hard work it doesn't take extensive training behind it to be able to provide it. And it also might communicate that our therapy services can't bring a lot of transformation to clients, which is not true, right? And it also can communicate that our therapy is not powerful or therapeutic enough, but that's not so, right? We don't want to communicate that. We don't want to signify that, right? But that's what underpricing does, right? Underpricing makes it seem like it's not worth much. Makes it seem like it doesn't take hard work or extensive training to do it. Makes it seem like it doesn't bring transformation and it's not powerful, but it is, right? So we have to price it commensurate to its value. So now the second common way that we undervalue our therapy and thus make us stay broke <laughs> actually is kind of like not direct, but you'll see why it, it is. Uh, is actually sticking with counseling instead of actually doing art therapy work that you truly want to do. Why does this mean that we're undervaluing and why does this lead to us being broke? Because it does demonstrates that you don't believe in art therapy, right? That you don't believe people need art therapy. You don't believe that it is valuable for them, so you don't do it. And there's this assumption that, you know, it's not viable because people don't believe in art therapy, right? And so you don't do it. So I think that we are we are therapists often have a hard time defining the value of art therapy. It's just something that they don't teach us in school, uh, but I think it's so important to know because that is what makes a difference in you getting booked for your service. You have to know the value of your service, right? It's important to know this because oftentimes we subconsciously hold the belief that art and creative expression is not valuable. And that is because, right, you know, a lot of people around us tell us that, a lot, of people, a lot of societies uphold that belief, and so we get influenced by it. And we also think so consciously that, oh, art must not have a lot of value, or creative expression must not have a lot of value, and thus people won't look for it. Other people won't see its value. And if other people don't see its value, then maybe it doesn't have value. It just makes us also believe that it's not valuable. Or if it's not valuable. And so have you ever thought of art as child's play? Have you ever thought art making is a waste of time? Have you ever thought art making is frivolous? Have you ever thought art making is non-essential? Have you ever seen an art department or class get closed down because they thought it was non-essential? All these things communicate to us. All these things give us the feeling that art must not be valuable, 
right? It's extraneous, it's silly, it's unimportant, especially in the adult world where everybody's so serious and, you know, they got to make, make a living and art does not do that or creative things do not do that. So if you find yourself sticking with counseling work, even though you want to do more art therapy as an art therapist, a part of you may be possibly believing that creative arts is not valuable and that is influencing your decision. You know, you want to just do what's more valuable, quote unquote more valuable, which is counseling work, <laughs> right? That is the kind of like assumption that we have, right? But let's go to the point of this. Why does this lead to you being broke or earning less than you can? Because you're doing something that's not 100% aligned with your heart. There was a reason why you went through art therapy training specifically and not counseling. There's a reason why you are wanting to do more art therapy work with clients. It's because that is what is truly aligned with who you truly are. It's your real self. If your heart is not in it 100%, then there will be a part of you that will feel drained easily. A part of you that will long for something different, right? And, you're, and when you're in the state of being drained, you're more prone to burnout. You're more prone to feeling indifferent about your work and you're just not being 100% lit up by your work. And when that happens, you're leaving money on the table. Because what happens is when you are 100% lit up, actually lit up by your work, you want to attract clients. You want to attract opportunities. You want to thrive. Because you have the energy and the passion to be consistent, to be inspired, to go the extra mile for what you do, to show up and to not give up versus the other person who might not, who might not be 100% lit up by the same thing that you're doing, right? That is so, so important that being 100% aligned with what you do is what brings you success, is what uh, brings you clients, right? That energy is the source really of your success of your business and so when you do not do that thing then your energy is leaking out you know your energy is not being used where it wants to be used right uh, and so that's why when you do counseling and, and you feel like counseling is not 100% your thing quote-unquote your thing then you're leaving money on the table Right. Of course, if you feel like 100% housing is your passion and maybe art therapy was not that much of your thing, then, I mean, congratulations, you found your thing, right? Continue doing the work. However, I think that a lot of what art therapists struggle with is just that, you know, we don't go 100% in on the art therapy just because we have this assumption that it's not valuable and it's not going to be valued, However, where does that come, belief come from? It comes from us and it's something that we can always change. All right, so the last way that I think undervalues our therapy service is actually not sharing about our work, not promoting our therapy, right? And we do this because we think that people won't be attracted to our therapy. We assume that, you know, if I share about art and if I promote about art therapy, nobody will come to me since they don't see my see the value in art therapy in what I do. However, when you think like that, you're assuming that however the issue is you assuming that and not sharing art therapy actually undervalues art therapy. Because you're demonstrating that art therapy is indeed not valuable. So it is not worth even mentioning. It's not even worth sharing about. It's not worth promoting and letting people know about. It's, maybe it's not that great. There is that assumption, right? That's the message that we're sending out to the world about art therapy when we know art therapy, but we don't share about it. So sometimes I think it's really our duty and our love to share about our therapy because we know that it brings so much help and difference in people's lives. If you knew you had the solution for people's lives and you kept it a secret, that is not a great thing to do, right? <laughs> it's almost like a crime, right? Yeah, so, you know, when we don't share about something that we know is great, we know is good, what is the result of it? The result of it is that no one knows about it then. 
and then no one will sign up for it. No one will get it. No one will receive art therapy. And now we have less art therapy in the world. And then of course, again, it's us leaving money on the table because no one knows about it. No one will sign up for it then. All right, so that's the three big ways I think that we undervalue art therapy and actually leaves money on the table and makes us earn less and makes us broke, right? Sometimes it's not a very direct cause and effect. However, it does affect that, right? affect our value and what we earn. Um, and I know it feels very challenging, right, to be an art therapist because we think that art therapy work is not widely recognized. However, I do think that sometimes we are the ones also holding the assumption and belief that art therapy is not valuable and thus we underprice ourselves and thus we don't share about our work and thus we don't even engage in this work and do something different, right? And those things in turn perpetuate the cycle of art therapy being undervalued. You know, not to mention we also leave money on the table, <laughs> right? So I hope that this opened up a different way of looking at the value of art therapy and how we might be undervaluing ourselves and also our therapy work. Um, and it gives maybe it gives you also idea of how you can actually bring, demonstrate more value of art therapy. Right? which is doing the opposite, price ourselves well, <laughs> do the art therapy that work that we want to do, that we are passionate about, and then third, sharing about it, right? So thanks so much for listening. I'm going to catch you in the next episode. And until then, have a really great one. <laughs> Bye.